Hey guys, it's Courtney here in the Revive Kitchen. And today I want to invite you into my kitchen and I'm not going to try to do a video where it's like all of the crazy popular videos where it's the overhead angle where you have everything measured out in the little jars and I'm like dumping things in, it's super cute. Instead, I'm just gonna invite you in here and show you how I cook things on a daily basis. The main reason behind this is because I don't have the patience to sit here for you know, like an hour or two and cook this thing with all of the right angles for you. I'm just really hungry. Technically, most of my dinners that I post on the blog, they should take you like 20 or 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes to an hour. Some people have told me if they're not used to cooking and they're not familiar with their kitchen and, and they're just kind of getting into cooking. But I really do strive to make most of my meals timely. So anyway, here we go. Okay. So I've told my story before. Hold on. Let me make sure the mic is not, that you can still hear me. Let me just get this situated. Okay. So if you know my story, then you know I started out with Indian food. And I started with Indian food because I had a lot of awesome ingredients and needed to know how to cook them. And Indian food uses all these fresh ingredients and all these wonderful spices. So even if you're trying to steer clear from salt or gluten or sugar, like Indian food is kind of the answer to that, or at least that's what I found. I've kind of learned since meeting more Indian people and then just becoming a better cook that the way that I do Indian food is not exactly authentic. There's all sorts of different cuisines in India and different types of people, and I'm sure that there are Indian people that can't cook, just like there are plenty of people here that can't cook. So even if my food is not exactly authentic, oh well. This is how I make Indian food. So Indian food always starts off with a base of onions and garlic and ginger. This ginger is really special because my friend Heather grew it. Now today I am making my tandoori butter chicken and sog um, of palak, which would mean kind of like a cooked down version of spinach. Um, and the tandoori chicken starts with caramelized onions. And since those take the longest in my timing, I'm starting with those first. I'm gonna go ahead and get those going. And in the meantime, I'm going to create my tandoori spice blend for the chicken, which I'm gonna bake. Tandoori refers to an, an oven or an Indian way of cooking things in an oven. And normally a tandoori oven is, um, is a clay oven. We're just gonna do it in the regular oven. Now I love starting with the onions first because first of all, your kitchen smells amazing while you're cooking. And then also they take the longest to just caramelize down into that nice, sweet, sugary onion. And the chicken's gonna take about 12 minutes to bake and these will take 20 minutes. So if I'm timing things, I definitely wanna get these started first. I am going to cook them in this beautiful ghee. And yeah, this is kind of product placement, but they're also my friends. They're the ones who um, ended up doing the spice kit for the flavor crash course, if you recall which was such a blessing because that way you guys were able to see all the different spices that we talk about in the course book and see them and touch them and smell them. So let's go ahead and get these in there. Now ghee is really great because it is um, safe for people with dairy allergies. Usually the milk protein, the casein has been um, it's been removed and they do testing on their ghee, not this one, but their cultured ghee, they do testing on, so it should be fine for people with dairy allergies. Put that on medium high. I am about to start some rice. I don't really do bread, you know, because I was gluten free for so long. I don't really know how to make bread that well. I can cook all day long, but Bread is not my strong suit. In a couple weeks though, 
I really want to try to make roti, which is also called, oops, chapati, um, which is an Indian type of bread because although you can eat this with rice, and many people do, you can also eat it with this bread and it's, it's really good. You can make it with sprouted flour, you can make it with, I know you can make it with gluten-free flours, but that sounds kind of hard to me too. So I'm gonna start with regular gluten flour and go from there. In case you're curious, I just did a cup and a half of rice and I'm doing two and a quarter cups of water. And I'm gonna let these simmer on low for between 20 and 25 minutes. Ooh, and I should preheat the oven to 350. Next, I'm going to put together the spice rub for the tandoori chicken. And why don't you guys come up a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. So I was gonna do the spice mix, but then I realized that I need onion for my spinach dish. And I only need half an onion, so I might as well go ahead and cut it up and add at least half of it to my caramelized onions. The more onion, the better. There. Okay. Let me just get this done real quick. Okay, I'm gonna add these to the caramelized onions real quick. Cool, all right. So, to date I have not actually done this recipe on film or on the blog, so it's a good time to show this to you. So I'm adding like 13 different spices in here, but you can cheat and you can buy something like tandoori masala seasoning, um, which are pre-made. I, however, am adding all of this stuff a little bit at a time. Okay, don't let this intimidate you. Like I said, you can buy uh, a pre-made seasoning, which may or may not have all of the things that I'm using because everybody's kind of different. But the reason why I haven't put this on the blog before, this is um, coriander by the way, is because I just, I don't know, I just never measure it. I kind of just um, play it by ear because I understand how all of these spices work together. I've just worked with these spices for so long that I don't really need to, need to measure them or, I don't know, but I can put all the measurements on there for you. I just did equal amounts of cumin and coriander, by the way. And then my secret ingredient, which is cinnamon. Everybody who tries my cooking is like, oh my gosh, what did you add? Oh, it was cinnamon. Um, do a little bit of cloves. I never do a lot of cloves. I always do just a tiny amount. Cloves are super strong. I like ginger. I like quite a bit of ginger. Ginger's fairly strong too. This is um this is not that old, so it's still pretty good. You know, spices lose their potency over time, and typically you don't want to keep them longer than three to six months. So I try to use them fairly quickly. So you may not want to buy this much. You may not go through spices as quickly as I do. You might want to get smaller containers or better yet, split with a friend. I used to split with friends way more often than I do now. Um, just to kind of get them cheaper, the higher quality stuff cheaper and then also um, make sure I had fresh stuff. A little bit of salt and garlic powder. I really love fresh garlic better, but the garlic powder is nice for adding to this dry rub for the chicken. Let's see. Oh, we're gonna do fenugreek. Shout out to all my nursing moms. Fenugreek is really great for you. Helps with lactation. Did I grab black pepper? No, hold on. Do, I'm gonna 
gonna do a lot of black pepper. Makes it a little spicier, which I like. And then cayenne pepper. Where's my cayenne pepper? You can tell I go through this one. It's almost gone. That's kind of a lot for you guys that don't like spice. If you like mild and you're not really certain you like spicy stuff, maybe you just do a little bit. And lastly, these are cassia leaves, which are the leaf, it's the leaf from a cinnamon tree. So this is the cassia leaf, this is the leaf from the cinnamon tree, and it's reminiscent of cinnamon, but it's very mild. This is what we would call an Indian bay leaf. So I'm just gonna kinda crush that up here in my spice blend. You know, I might do two, just because they're so mild, but they have a really nice flavor. Like I said, everybody's always asking me, what's your secret ingredient? Normally the answer is cinnamon or cassia leaf. Okay, so this is my spice blend. I'm gonna go ahead and cut up the chicken and then toss it in this with a little bit of ghee, or you can use any oil really, but ghee's the best. It does take a little longer to brown onions with ghee because ghee, again, like I mentioned before, has all the milk proteins removed. So the proteins are what burn. It takes a little while to get it there. Okay, so I'm so excited about this chicken because this came from ButcherBox, which is this company I've kind of been talking about a little bit on social media lately. And they, so I got a box from them and the grass-fed beef, oh my gosh, you guys, the steaks from this thing were seriously like the best steaks I've had. And no offense to my, my farmer friends back in Tennessee um, who raised grass-fed beef, but I don't know where ButcherBox is getting their beef, but it was stupid good. It, their steaks are like... So they sent, me, they sent me a bunch of beef, they sent me some pork, and I have the chicken. So I wanted to try the chicken in the, um, in the tandoori butter chicken recipe. And here's why. Normally I use thighs because I like the dark meat. The dark meat is more tender and more moist, and I just find that it doesn't become dry when you're cooking it. Sorry, I'm like, need to get my act together and actually cut this stuff. Um, but chicken breasts, I find it to be my least favorite cut of ch the chicken. It's just dry, and um, I, don't, I don't know, I don't usually like it. So we're gonna see how this turns out and if it maintains its moisture and has a good flavor. And I'm, I should mention too that everything from ButcherBox is like the highest quality meat you can get. So all of their stuff is grass fed and finished or pasture raised. Think of all the buzzwords that you know and they have them on their label, so. You guys, I can't express to you enough how important it is to have sharp knives in your kitchen. It is so much safer to have a sharp knife when you're not sitting there like sawing on something and have a higher likelihood of slippage. It's so much easier and quicker and more pleasant to cook with sharp knives. You simply have more control. See, I'm keeping my fingers out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the chicken to this baking pan and you want it to be just large enough to hold the chicken in a single layer. And then what I'm gonna do is add a bit more oil for these to cook in. And then I'm gonna put my spice blend in here. Oops, oh my gosh, I was looking at something else.
we're gonna make sure that this is coated in the spice mixture. And you know what I didn't add that I want to add and that I've done in the past? Paprika. Why? Because it is pretty and it has a mild taste of peppers and I love peppers. And now my chicken is red, which I like. One last thing I wanna do is add a bit of lemon zest. Maybe a little more. Okay. Oh, that smells so good. Alrighty, so now what I'm gonna do is throw this in the oven for 12 minutes. Give the onions a stir. I don't know if you can see, but they're kind of starting to brown over here. I'm gonna put this in the oven. Those are gonna go for 12 minutes, and I got lucky. I don't even have to reset my timer because my rice still has 12 minutes as well. So in that 12 minutes, I'm going to make the sauce and start spinach. If you're not a hand washer, at least put stuff in the dishwasher and just wash as you go, you guys, because it's so much better than cleaning up at the end. Okay, now it's time to make the sauce. And what would butter chicken be without a big gob of butter? Again, if you wanna do like a dairy safe option, you can just add like a ton more ghee and that would be fine. And let that butter melt. I'll bring that back up to medium. I'm adding a bunch of frozen peppers that I got from the farmer's market earlier in the year. That's good. You know, when the peppers are in their, their peak of the season, I love getting as many as I can and freezing them, as many as I can fit in my freezer because the flavor is just incredible. So in addition to this, I'm gonna add tomato paste. That is probably half a jar of this. Next, I'm gonna add cream. So I'm not gonna use all this cream, I normally would, but I'm kinda of hoarding this for my coffee this week. So I'm gonna add milk. Add a little salt, garam masala. This is another Indian blend. This is um, cumin, coriander, cinnamon, clove. I can't remember what else I added to it, but there's a few different ways to make it. It's just as special as tandoori. Maybe I'll make a video on how to make garam masala sometime. This is more cayenne pepper. I like it spicy. So I'm gonna let that simmer while I'm making the spinach. So this is my onion for the spinach. I'm gonna dice this as well. Remember the onion, garlic, ginger? That's what's happening now. So it is on medium heat. Get my onions going. I'm gonna do three, four cloves of garlic. Four is probably good. And some ginger. This is about the same amount of garlic, volume-wise. I'm gonna peel this with a spoon. That would be my chicken. And my rice. So what's gonna happen with the chicken is I'm going to let it sit for just a minute here and let my sauce simmer for a little bit longer. And then I'm going to um, put the cubed chicken into the sauce and let the chicken and the spices from the chicken blend in with the, the sauce ingredients for maybe five or 15 minutes or however long it takes me to finish the spinach. So I'm gonna add the, I'm gonna add the garlic 
but I'm gonna keep an eye on it because I don't want it to burn. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and cut up these tomatoes because they won't burn if I have a liquid in there like a tomato. Okay, so I've got my onions and garlic and ginger going in there. My sauce looks great. I'll show you guys in a minute. I'm not moving camera right now, but um, I'm gonna put my chicken in there. Yeah, that's too hot to touch. I'm not gonna do that. So when your chicken comes out of the oven, it's not gonna be fully cooked. I mean, if it is, that's fine, but it probably will be a little bit undercooked, which is perfect because I'm adding it to this sauce and it's gonna continue to cook for a little bit and all these flavors are really gonna blend together. And like I said, this will probably be perfectly done by the time my spinach is done. I'm gonna cover this. Make sure it's on low, low. We don't want it to burn. And I'm gonna finish up my spinach. So I'm gonna add these tomatoes. And the tomatoes are gonna provide the juice and a little bit of steam for the spinach to cook. And in that line of thinking, I'm gonna add a little salt. All right, I think it's probably time for you guys to come a little bit closer again. So let's get that set up. I'm coming back, you guys. I'm just digging around. Okay, I'm back. So what I did is I got some whole cumin seed. You know, I was gonna use ground cumin, but I have whole cumin, so why would I not use it? Whole, whole spices are like infinitely superior to ground spices. And if you are using ground spices, preferably you should grind them um, fresh. I don't always do that, but I would prefer to if I wasn't balancing convenience. And you know what? I feel like a little mustard seed today. Oh my gosh, I just spilled them everywhere. So I've got these spices in here, but there's not nearly enough oil to bloom them. So I'm gonna add a little bit more ghee. To this mixture. The oil will penetrate the seed and help that seed to open up and express its flavor a little better. Alrighty, so these should be good. I'm gonna give this a good stir and then I'm gonna add in my spinach and cook my spinach down. Okay, everything is done. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on a plate and eat it, because I am starving. Hot. All right guys, thanks for joining me today. I had fun making this video for you. Please subscribe to my channel, so that way you know when one of these other videos is gonna come out. And be sure to check out my Flavor Crash Course at flavorcrashcourse.com and follow me at revivekitchen.com. I'll see you later.